Hello everyone, today our topic is science tools. We're going to go over some of the really common scientific tools you would use in the lab. We won't be able to go over everything, but those more unique items that we, if we use them in the lab, I will discuss how you use them properly before that lab. Okay. So to become a successful scientist, we must be able to know what our tools are for and how to use them and make sure that we're using the correct ones for the correct jobs. Okay. Um, we have tools that are meant for collecting data, some that are meant for taking measurements, some for recording observations, and then some that are like safety um, equipment to protect you during the lab. Um, scientists use a variety of tools to perform experiments and investigations. We want to make sure we're using the right tool to measure the right things. Okay. So some of our safety equipment, the first one is gloves. These are worn to protect your hands while in the science lab. Um, you would use these if you're doing a dissection or working with really dangerous chemicals that could harm your skin. Next is goggles. These are worn to protect your eyes while in the science lab. You're going to wear these almost every time you come into the lab if you're working with chemicals or dissecting um, any animals. Anything that could be harmful for your eyes, if you've got them in there, if you're working with that in the lab, you're going to wear goggles. Next is an apron. This is worn to protect your clothing in the science lab. This is really up to you whether we wear it sometimes because most of the time, if it gets on your clothes, you'll just get a small stain, usually, if something gets on your clothes. If you're worried about it during the lab, just let me know and I can get you an apron, but most of the time we won't need to wear these. All right, next thing we have is a metric ruler. In science class, we'll always use the metric system. So our rulers are two-sided usually. There's an inches side and like a centimeter side. You wanna make sure you're always using the centimeters so that when we're measuring length and width, it's in the correct units. All right, then we have a meter stick. This is just for a full meter. A lot of our meter sticks are also yard sticks at the same time. So you wanna make sure you're using the metric side, the side that's in centimeters going up to one meter. Next is a compass. This allows you to tell which direction you are facing. So it uses the magnetic pole of the earth to figure out where the north is. So it'll always point towards north and then you can read what direction you're actually facing because of which way it's pointing towards north. All right next, we're going to be using a Celsius thermometer in science class. We will not be using Fahrenheit. Okay, so if you get a thermometer that looks like this, it has both on there. For your lab, you would always write the Celsius side. Okay, Celsius is what we use in the metric system. Here is a graduated cylinder. They come in a variety of different sizes, and we use this to measure volume, um, fluid volume. If you are measuring something and they say to put it into a beaker, you would first measure the amount in a graduated cylinder and then put it into a beaker because a beaker is a very rough estimate. Graduated cylinder is more precise and accurate for measuring um, liquid volume. So a beaker, like I said, it's this says it measures 150 milliliters, but at the same time here you see it only goes to 140. These tallies are really far apart. They're not the most accurate. So you would measure in your graduated cylinder first, and then you would pour it into your beaker, and this would give you a rough estimate of how much you have. Um, the glass beakers can also be used for heating whatever substance you have in here. So you could put it on a hot plate or use it above a Bunsen burner. All right, a pan balance. This is when you are trying to measure and compare two different things and you want to get them evenly weighted. So you would put them on both sides until they are balanced together. Then triple beam balance. 
So here we would put our object on the pan right here. And then you have three beams. That's why it's a triple beam. And each beam measures a different amount. So one goes up by ones, one goes up by tens, and one goes up by hundreds. And you would move what is called a rider. It's this piece right here on each of the balance beams until this is level. And when that's level, you know how much amount you have. All right, another type of balance we have is a digital balance. Um, in a lot of cases, we'll be using this rather than the triple beam or the pan balance. Um, it's very sensitive and can accurately measure up to the milligram amount. And you would just place your object on the pan and make sure it's zero before you put the object on there and then it measures it. If you have a liquid or a powder substance, you would put a weighing boat down on the pan before you put your specimen on the pan. Calculator, most of you guys know what these are. You use them to help you solve math problems. Um, in science, we'll often have these as well. So a calculator is used for science as well as math. Spring scale, okay. Um, otherwise referred to as a fishing scale sometimes because fishermen use this to measure the weight of their fish. Um, what happens is there's a spring in here and you put your object on the hook and it hangs down and that tells you the weight because of the pull of gravity. Stopwatch, we use this to measure time. Um, most experiments we would do would be like in seconds but you could have some that go over minutes or even hours. Notebooks, very, very important that we have notebooks, writing material for um, science experiments because you want to be able to write down your observations and data. Sometimes I will give you like a printed lab sheet and it'll have where you need to write your observations on there, but you could always use a notebook as well. Hand lens, this is like a small magnifying glass, allows you to make objects a little bit bigger so that you can see the finer details easier. Then we have test tubes. Okay, this is to contain small amounts of substances. Um, it could be solids or liquids. Most of the time it's gonna be liquids. You can use these test tubes to observe small reactions. So we could mix two liquids together and see if they change color or make a precipitate, some type of chemical reaction. Next we have is a Petri dish. This is a container that we use to store small samples of specimens. We can also use it to grow cultures of microorganisms. And how you would do that is like in this picture here, there's an agar, that yellow stuff is like a gel that we call agar and then you would place your specimen on there and you would put it into a special um, place to grow and over time you would see microorganisms or like molds that type of thing growing on the agar. Camera, so we might use a camera to do some type of visual observation record keeping, might be pictures or video. Magnet, this is used to um, attract items and produce a magnetic field. It's only going to attract magnetic items, so most metals. Microscope, we'll use these a lot in life science and biology. Um, this allows you to see very, very small objects um, that you couldn't see with just your eye. So like the cells is one that we'll use this for a lot um, to see mitosis and meiosis, that type of thing. All right, a telescope. We probably won't be using these too often, but it's not, it doesn't hurt to learn what it is. It allows you to see objects in the sky and it makes them larger so that you can see them. Collecting net. We might use these more in environmental science so that we could go outside and collect different substances like insects or butterflies or other types of things like that. 
computer. Um, we use these a lot in science to do research or record our observations and data or maybe even make data tables or graphs. Hot plate. This is what we use to heat up substances in the lab. This is if we want to have a direct and controlled heat. Um, you can set it to a specific temperature um, so that you can heat it up. It kind of works like your stove top. Prisms. This is a tool that allows you to scatter light. So in some physical science experiments, we would want to be able to control how the light comes in and scatter it so that we can see the different wavelengths. Bunsen burner. Now this is kind of like your hot plate, except that you cannot control the specific temperature. Instead, you have an open flame and you might use this to um, heat substances or you might even use this to start a flame on a substance so that you can see what color it burns. Next we have is a flask. This is very similar to your beaker where it's going to be used to contain some liquids. But at the same time, we use this because you're trying to mix or stir something in a certain way. It has this narrow spout and the flat bottom. Right? And again, this isn't all of the science tools, but it's a good majority of the common ones that we would use.